Hi hey everyone, today I want to try out a new video format called 100 Lines of Swift, and I'm going to use it to explore how to use AI to classify food on iOS. The idea behind it is to do something that is kind of cool and interesting in less than 100 lines of code. The reason being that I think sometimes exploring new technologies like AI or something else can be very time consuming and can have a rather steep learning curve in the beginning. You can easily spend hours reading documentation and watching tons of videos before you get to a point where you have even a basic demo project. I personally find it easier to learn if I can start by creating something that works, even if it's very simple, and then building on top of it with more complex functionality. So my goal with this video and others like it will be to hopefully help you get started exploring new technologies in a short amount of time. Just a short disclaimer, the goal of the video is not to demonstrate best coding practices or architecture. I'm keeping all of the code in one file, and I've chosen to write short code rather than elegant code. I hope you will be okay with that. So in today's video, we'll be exploring Apple's Vision Framework, which you can use to classify images or videos. My short demo app classifies food, and as you can see in this cupcake, which I purchased in the name of science, it manages to do a decent job of classifying it correctly. Uh, when you try to uh, do it with a coffee cup, unfortunately, it doesn't do so well. But the, the basics are there and, you know, with a better model, you can do a better job. So let's get started. Before we even get to the code, we will first need to find a model to use. The first place I usually go to look for models is on Apple's own website, which has a collection of really good models that you can just take and use in your own projects. I've used a couple of these, but for this, for this specific example, I decided to look on GitHub and see what the community has instead. Here is an example of a library that has a model called Food 101, which I decided to research a bit, and it seemed very interesting and so I wanted to kind of try to use something that didn't come from Apple themselves because a lot of good resources come from the broader community so you just need to download it make sure you save it somewhere on your desktop and then you can put it into your project later while it's downloading I highly recommend you actually go and read a little bit about the background of all of these models a lot of good work goes behind the scenes on them. This one specifically <laughs> uses, uh, classifies things into very fancy foods, so I thought that would be interesting to use. But once we have our model, then we can put it into our project and pass our video into it so it can classify the different frames and then display the classification to the user is the general workflow that we need to go through. So let's pop into Xcode, create a new project, name it anything, I've called mine ML Food Recognizer. And you, you can use a storyboard and Swift or another combination of settings. It doesn't really matter too much for this. And by the way, this project is going to be linked to in the description, so don't worry about having to copy all of the code. You can look at it later on your own time. When the project is created, you can drag and drop the Food 101 101 model into the project, copy it if needed, and you'll see it on your left uh, with all the rest of the files. If you click on it, you can see the settings that are relevant to it. You can see what labels it's able to, to show you. Those are the types of things that it can recognize. And some models come with hundreds of these, some only come with a few. It really just depends on the model that you find. and you can actually test it by dragging in a picture. So I have this picture of a cupcake. It takes a little bit of time to process it, but when it's done, it'll tell you what it thinks that picture is. In this case, I've, I've been careful to, to give it an image of something that it can recognize, like a cupcake. If you give it something else, it'll try to guess it, but the probability with which it's sure about it, it'll be low. In this case, it's 100% sure that this is a cupcake, so that's pretty good. This is a good way to test the model before you actually start tying it into your project. And this is, you can change various settings in your project, but what's actually important is we need to allow the camera. And the way you allow for camera input to be used in a project is you have to explain why you're asking to use the camera. 
So you have to set this privacy camera usage description. And in this case, I'm just going to say something very generic so that we can just use this. Since we're not publishing this app anywhere, it's only for an experiment. It doesn't really matter. But you need to do this in order for the camera to work. So once we've set this up, then we can get into the code. And finally, this is all of the code that we will need. You can see it's only 92 lines and that's all it's going to take to, to, to have our app up and running. And now we're going to go a little bit line by line to explain what each thing does. So the first thing we need to look at is device input. That is property that we have to have as well as this AV capture session. Apple likes to do things in sessions and that's uh, something we need every time we use a video or a camera. And a video queue, which is a different thread that we're going to use to process a lot of the classification so they don't take up the main thread. Video data output is again another property that is uh, necessary when you're dealing with video. And then root layer, text overlay, and preview layer are, if you can imagine them, they're sort of layers on top of each other. When you deal with video, one of them's showing the text, the other one's showing the video, and they're sort of stacked on top of each other, and you need a UI view to hold it all. The prediction is a VN classification observation. That's what a classification is. So the food, for example, cupcake is going to be a prediction. And then request is the request that we're going to use to send to the model to classify. The first function of three that we're going to look at is called setup, video capture, and layers. So this is where we're going to set up our video capture and the different layers that I mentioned earlier. So video device, uh, we're going to say use the default, the default for video on, on an iPhone. That's typically the back camera. And we're going to say use this for the input. And if you can't find it, then stop right there because there's no point in going further if we can't find a video device. The next part, the middle chunk is configuring the session, which I mentioned earlier. We need to give it a default resolution, which we've chosen as VGA 640 by 480. And then we add the input and output to it. The last uh, pieces of code are related to the preview layer, root layer and text overlay. And those are regarding to how we set up the, uh, the video and give it the settings that we need to give it in order to work. The next function we're going to look at is the setup vision function. And this is related to using the model that we included into our project earlier. You can see that we say uh, we identified by its name and it, its extension. Once we've done that, if we can't find it, we stop right there, we return. But then if we do find it, we go ahead and we try to set up, uh, send it a request, a VNC core ML request. And then if we do get results from the model, we put those back on the main queue and we update classification label. That's how we transfer the classification to our label that the user sees. If we can't do that, then we catch the error and we simply print error could not set up vision. The function on the bottom that's called capture output is something we just have to have and how we pass the image request handler to the model. The last function we have to have is the update classification label. This is how we actually update the label. Uh, we called this from the previous section, but basically the one thing to note here is that we don't need to update the label every time we receive a classification because we're passing 30 frames per second to the model. The video is 30 frames per second and we're going to get 30 classifications. So we don't need to flash all of those to the user, but we only need to replace the observation if it has a higher confidence. So, you know, we only need to show the, the user the highest confidence prediction because that's actually what's useful to them. And that's basically it. Once we've once we've updated the user based on what the latest observation is, that's it. As soon as the user moves the camera away to another scene, then it starts to feed it, the model new images and it starts to make new predictions. And that's how it works. If you get this far in the video, I highly recommend you grab the actual project and play with it on your own. 
If you do grab the code and test it, you should be able to get a result very similar to mine. Just please remember that you need to do this on a real device and it won't work on the Xcode simulator alone. If you have any ideas on how to improve the code or if you use this example to build something cooler than me, please let us know in the comments. I think AI vision can be used to make some pretty cool things and I'd be interested to see what other people can do. Please also leave a like and a subscribe if you like this type of video and I'll make some more in the future. For now though, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.